All right, so here we are, Southern Short Track, you know. Is, is it as special as everybody else says it is? You, you're a Southern boy, so, you know, what is it like for you? Yeah, it is. It's pretty special. Um, you know, I've had the chance to go out in the campgrounds for some time with the fans here at Richmond. It's my first time here at the racetrack at Richmond. And, uh, you know, just trying to take it all in. It's cool to come to a place that has so much history in the sport. And it is special to a lot of different people and, you know, and a lot of different drivers over the past. So hopefully uh, we can make it just as special for us at the end of the day. Yeah, so obviously it's a very historic place as well. So, you know, you're a young guy, but do you embrace NASCAR history when you get to race at a place like this? Uh, I really do. I feel like Richmond's a place that it's known for, you know, hot hot days, hot nights, and tempers of flare because of it. And it, it always adds for that little bit more excitement. And it's always on the cuffs of, of the, you know, what was the chase and now the playoffs. Um, a lot of stuff goes on around, around the you know, all around this racetrack, you know, throughout the history. So um, it's cool now to be able to take part in that and hopefully be able to make our own history with the, the rising young stars of this sport and uh, trying to put my name in the middle of that group. Um, it, it always makes you appreciate the stuff and the people that have come before you um, to, to lay the ground for us to come here and have an opportunity to do what we get to do. Was this a place that you went to as a kid? You know, do you have, like, childhood memories here? I, I'd be lying to you if I told you I'd, I'd been to Richmond before. I've always been at home watching the races um you know i've honestly never been within 200 miles of the racetrack so it's kind of crazy because my wife has raced here two or three times yeah. and i was always off short track racing on my own and never got to come watch and support her when she came to this racetrack so uh yesterday was my first stop on the racetrack and i loved every one of them yeah so one of the major historians of the sport dale jr is now his last year you know is i'm guessing you have met him you know quite a few times in your career so is he as kind as a guy as everyone says he is uh and then some you know dale jr is uh, a guy, and, and I said this yesterday, you know, iconic, I feel like can be overused in, in various sports across the, across, you know, athletes throughout the world, and that guy is iconic, and what he's done for this sport, and how genuine he is of a person off camera, or on camera, he's even that much more of a, of a, of a genuine person off camera, and uh, I've had the pleasure to, to meet him a couple of times, and just to know this the sense of calmness you get being around him, you don't feel like you're uptight, you don't feel like you're trying to push something that you can be yourself just like he is. Yeah. Do, do you, is that so, I'm, you know, you watched him growing up, so you've seen him on TV. Is that someone how you, how you really look up to? You look at him like, oh, man, I want to be like him. Yeah, Dell Jr. is definitely a guy who had an influence on my life as well as his father. You know, growing up myself in Kannapolis, North Carolina, being so close to the home of Dell and Hart Incorporated at the time. And um, just seeing those guys build this sport, you know, on their shoulders alone, it's been – been pretty crazy to, to see how you know how and what they've done you know for themselves um you know starting back with ralph and then dale and then dale jr so it's cool to to know that we're all from the same location and it's even better to know that me being from the same area that hopefully we can keep keep the trend of uh, guys coming out of Canapolis strong and i look to do that are you disappointed you won't be able to race him and Gordon Stewart, you know, I'm guessing you're going to be in Cup someday, but well, you're not going to race those guys. Is that the it is a little bit. I've always said, you know, before, you know, their their absence of the sport, I always said, man, I think it's been so cool to be able to participate back in the 70s and 80s and drive those race cars and race against those guys. And um, to know that the next wave, you know, being Gordon Stewart and, and now Dale Jr., those type of guys, I'm not going to get the race against those guys either. It, it is a little heartbreaking. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, the sport's evolving just like everything is. And uh, we just got to be able to – fit to that mold and, and, and be ourselves and I think NASCAR's done a great job of allowing the newer guys coming into the sport to be themselves to kind of build their own brand and, and be able to show your own personality of however that is you want to do it if, and, and not push something you're not I think that's been the biggest objective and what fans seem to pull forward um, I hate them not going to get to like I said race those guys but uh, it gives us an opportunity to build ourselves do you feel lucky that you because they just retiring right now and you're just getting started do you feel it's quite the time to be in the sport for you. So you're just getting started, and they're just come, they're just leaving. So you're just catching the tail end of it. Do you feel lucky that you're able to at least share the track a little bit with them? Oh, for sure. You know, it, it is cool to you know know that when when you pass them in the garage or whenever it is, you know, you're passing something that it's not going to be here much longer. And, and to know that you still get to be a part, a little part of that, is pretty cool. Um, and you know, honestly, it's, for me, it's about like even taking in the little things that people take for granted listening to those guys on the scanner you know one more week or something you know getting ready for practice and how they prepare for weekends the stuff we won't all get to do here very shortly so i'm uh, just trying to embrace that and what they've done for the sport and uh just try to appreciate the timing hypothetical question if they offered you juniors ride for next year would you take it <laughs> i think anybody would be crazy not to give the idea a thought um you know the establishment that rick hendrick has has built for himself and, and the quality of people and drivers he's, he's built around the organization is second to none and um 
you know, when I think about Richard Childress Racing being on the same level as that, it's impressive to know that seats are open like that, and I've heard my name just be asked in that same category is pretty incredible. So, um, man, I'm just, just a kid from Kannapolis trying to figure out a way to, to race for a living, and uh, any time an opportunity like that's available, you have to give it interest. Yeah. So, you know, your first truck season, you were winless. Your second one last year, winless. This year, your first Xfinity season, you came damn close to winning Bristol last week. So, what has changed in Daniel Henry? I don't say nothing's really changed. I feel like my drive, my desire, my preparation has always been the same. It's just a matter of maybe execution um, in the NASCAR style vehicle versus short track racing. Um, you know, with the variables of pit stops and um, you know longer races and now stage racing and all, all the different variables that we have to deal with week in and week out. I feel like I may have mismanaged some of that stuff along the way, um, and I feel like this being a new excuse me. This being a new group of guys, we've done a, a good job as of late of maximizing those days. And mm -hmm. as you do that, you find yourself like, oh, man, this kid's figuring it out. Well, no, as a group, we're, we're figuring it out, and we're getting better together. And I think that's what's really helped. You're going to be racing Dale, I believe, two more times this year in the Xfinity Series. Now, is that, so the weekend's going to be a little bit different. You talked about, you know, they're iconic in the sport. So when you're sharing the track with them, especially when you know it's the last time, what's, what's it going to be like, you think? It's just going to be about appreciating the situation you're in. Um, you know, obviously, it's not in the back of your mind. Oh man, this is this guy's last time to be side by side. But it's just being aware of the of the presence at the racetrack, not as much the on track stuff. Um, but it is going to be cool to be able to line up next to him a couple times this year, and uh, maybe you can tell the grandkids later down the road you got to do that. Yeah. And final question: Did the truck series prepare you well for the Xfinity series? It, we're a little bit early into the season. You spent two years there. Do you feel like you're you're well prepared in the series now? I, I feel like I am. I feel like uh, you know I'm very diverse in the racetracks that, that NASCAR visits. Um, the truck series. Um, has a good mix, you know, from the short tracks to the, to the you know mile and a half, dirt road courses. So it it gives you a taste of about everything you're going to experience in the Xfinity Series. Um, and then as you take the next step, it's just a, in, in a little bigger stage uh, or add a little bigger stage. Um, and I feel like that's what that series has allowed you to unload at these places that I've been or not been, but still know what to expect out of a radio tire, um, how the racetracks are going to change with rubber, because that's something that other short track racing really can't do a whole lot of once you get to this level. So um, it, it was good to be able to spend that time and do it with good teams and uh, find myself here at Richard Children's Racing. Awesome. So I got a few uh, photos to show you uh, throughout your career. Just tell me just, you know, the memory you have and uh, maybe a cute little backstory. So let's start with this one here. Oh man, this is a uh, this is really heartfelt. I was able to spend a lot of time in 2015 visiting a lot of children's hospitals throughout the country, and uh, I remember this visit along with many others. Just being able to go in and these kids changing our lives. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they think we're there, they think we're superheroes, but at the end of the day, we're going in, and what we feel when we leave there, it's it's a bit of kind of the double-edged sword because you feel like you, you've done something so positive, but on the backside, you feel heartbroken because a lot of them were terminal but in the day you're able to give them a moment that hopefully they'll remember forever yeah got a couple more here a little bit of throwback yeah so this was a this was a good time in my career you know this was probably what kind of got a little bit of this this ball rolling yeah um roger and sandra hill gave me the opportunity to get in the hillbilly race modified and run some races on the northern modified tour and southern modified tour and uh, a lot of these race cars this one in particular is probably one of the first ones i was really really hands on building myself so wow. it was cool to be able to piece by piece put this thing together see it come together and go to the racetrack and and, and run pretty solid with it um unfortunately that deal didn't last too long term but it was definitely a highlight of my life yeah the last picture oh uh, Talk about dirt. <laughs> Quite the experience. That was my first uh, race, really on dirt outside of go kart racing. You know, back when I was really, really young. So uh, I remember being teammates with uh, Austin Dillon uh, at NTS at that time, uh, just trying to figure out what to do, what not to do. And I'll never forget Ty Dillon was in that race as well. And we both started back in the field, and they uh, Tony plowed the racetrack up around the bottom, and we were both starting on the bottom. And I said, "Man, what what's this place going to do when they drop the green flag?" He said, "Hey, just follow me around the bottom. I'm telling you, it's going to grip." I think we drove from like 15th and 17th to 4th and 5th wow. within the first 20 laps and we ended up, I think I ended up beating Austin and Ty, so I got a little leg up on the dirt race. <laughs> yeah, great stories, man. Definitely appreciate your time. Absolutely, man. That's like Thanks, you. Thanks, Thanks, man. Man. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. Good seeing you, bud. Yeah, you too. Thank you.